But then Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah. Jacob wanted children, and God gave him Rebekah, and they later had children. Samson wanted children, and he was given Manoah as a wife. And later Samuel was married and given to Elkanah and Hannah. John the Baptist was born to Zacharias and Elizabeth. Now listen to this list of births and see which one you'd rather be. King David was the eighth born in his family. He was the eighth child. David Brainerd was the ninth. These are all famous Christians now. You may not know all of them by name. Oswald Chambers was the ninth in his family. Charles Finney was the seventh in his family. D.L. Moody, who was saved in here in Boston, you can go ahead and see his plaque where he was converted by his soul-winning Sunday school teacher. D.L. Moody was the eighth of his family. David Livingston was fifth. Nate Saint, that died down in South America uh, at the hands of murderous Indians, he was the eighth in his family. A.V. Simpson was the ninth. John Wesley was the 14th in his family. Charles Wesley was the 17th. Wouldn't we have a laughing spell today if somebody walked through those doors followed by 17 children? Or would we have a, a hand of saying, what a blessing. May God bless you and strengthen you. The Wesley family produced at least two that are still famous today. Susanna Wesley gave birth to some 19 children. And the record books say that she, Bach was the eighth of his family. Jonathan Edwards was number 11. Deuteronomy 7.13 says, And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. Marriage is the divine institution of God to prove the sanctity of the human life. What is sanctity? It's holiness. It's a life of saintliness. The quality or condition of being considered holy or sacred. God says life is holy and sacred and thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Oh, what would happen if we had a revival in America? Would nurses still go work for hospitals that are performing abortions? Would we even want to go in there and trust the doctors and the nurses that may have been involved in abortion 10 minutes before we were ushered in? No. Would we have the faith to trust them or would we seek out another alternative? And again, one good alternative is let's be healthy now. Let's not eat the junk food. Let's not fail to do some exercising. You say it's too cold to run outside. You're right. Don't take a chance running outside. You can use our treadmill. It's working fine. You want to see your physical and spiritual life blessed by God? Submit to God's way and God's will. And let's pray for a spiritual revival. And let's pray that God's people would not want to follow the ways of the world. And pray for Tim Tebow, who has the attention of millions of people. Multitudes are watching him, both on the Internet and in person, trying to get him to trip up, trying to get him to make a a wrong move so they can mock and laugh at Christianity. But we may in this room not have a million observing us, but we do have some. Let's not mess up for their sake that they wouldn't say, yeah, well, I thought that fundamental independent Baptist stuff was just a big hoax anyway. Let's put that thought in the garbage by the lifestyle we live of godliness and holiness and take seriously what we hear from God's Word. Paul said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. We had that lifestyle we wouldn't have to worry about having an unwanted pregnancy and if we had that lifestyle we'd rather have children than we would a second car or a boat or a shotgun or a, a, a season's pass to see the Red Sox play as we had one member in my history that I can remember that seeing the Red Sox play was more important than being in church on Sunday if there was a game on Sunday and I say that's the prayer request we should have for our brother Tim Tebow, that if he really wants to be an example and follow the footsteps of his Baptist parents that brought him up, that he would not be playing on Sunday. He would say that Sunday is a day of rest and reverence and worship of my God, and you can play your football, but I'm not going to be on the, on, the, on the field that day. And that would create a great example around the world. Just like Israel shuts down its airports on Saturday and shuts down its businesses on Saturday because they're honoring the God of the Old Testament and they don't even believe Jesus arose.
shoes yet, but they have more commitment to what they believe than most Christians do to what we believe. If it's unpopular, if it looks a little unusual, then we don't want to touch it. You say, I dress like that in this day and age, people would laugh me out of Medford. They might have a greater respect for you than if you dress like a Barbie dial and they can see every curve in your body and wonder where did that lifestyle come from. They don't have the intelligence to even wonder where the biblical modesty principle comes from because they've been misled by a government system that's filled with corruption. They told Daniel, you're going to stop praying. Daniel did a Tim Debo and prayed three times a day right there in front of the window where he always did pray. How many of us would be willing to bow the knee as you go out of the church today or go over here as you cross the street before you cross the street? He does it in front of the cameras of hundreds of millions. How many of us would be willing to say, I want to identify with that man of prayer, that man of faith? Again, he's not perfect, and neither am I. Oh, nor I would like to strive to be, and you're not either, but let's do something to honor and glorify Christ. What would be matter with doing this this week to somebody you work with? Or Tuesday night, go out and meet a stranger with us, and you could say, God loves you. Happy New Year. Hope to see you in heaven. Somebody's going to take that and start opening and saying, well, what's this all about? You'll be able to pull one of these out and say, may I have just three minutes of your time? Tom, that was taking the cardboard to South Boston, gave me three minutes. And he was quite impressed, but he wouldn't pray. But at least, thank God, he's not going to be answerable. He's not going to be answerable to me. I'm not going to share his, uh, the, the loss of his life or soul if he dies and goes to hell. I gave him a clear presentation. He thanked me two or three times before he left the warmth of that place we were visiting. You want to see a church grow? You want to see win more souls to Christ? You want to spark a revival through the land? You want to see more missionaries go to the field? You want to fight abortion? Then raise a godly seed and we'll help you for God's glory. If you're not saved, that's the first step. If you are saved, let's say, Lord, thy will be done. Should I have a bus route? Should I have a Sunday school class? Or should I just have a large family and train them and delegate to them the privilege of serving this great God? Oh, what a challenge for all of us. God wants to use the singles. He wants to use the married, the divorced, the widows. He's for all of us. He's willing to reach in there and pull us out. The recycling time takes time, though, takes a while, and I'm going to take an old stumped-up soda can and turn it into that beautiful plaque, that little plate. 